So one of the new things that's been added in ES6 is the async await functions. So first we need to understand asynchronous code. Asynchronous code is anything that could take a while to finish. If you're doing a fetch call, if you are uh, doing a set timeout, doing some file IO operations, you're trying to read data from a file, you're talking to a database, anything like that. Something that doesn't give you an instant response like I can assign here a piece of HTML to a variable. That's an instantaneous thing. I can generate a random number. That's instantaneous, but or effectively instantaneous. But if I do something like a fetch, this is going to take some time. A request has to go off over the network, find the resource, and then be sent back from the server to my browser. So that's going to take a bit of time. That's an asynchronous example. That's probably the most common thing that you'll do with web development. So what I'm doing here is I have this basic uh, function where I'm doing this fetch request. I'm using the JSON placeholder uh, website to fetch some data. I'm picking a random user. I'm fetching that data. I'm going to convert it to JSON, the response that comes back. And then I'm going to take that data and I'm going to write it out inside this page. And I'm going to also here before the fetch happens, I'm going to write this. I'm going to add request sent to this part here. So it's going to say output area, and then it's going to say request sent when the actual res request is sent. When the result comes back, then it will write out the data. So that's the sequence that's going to happen. I'm going to call this function, get user. It's going to output this content. Well, it's going to send the request, then it's going to output this, and then the response will come back, be converted. So there's actually two asynchronous things happening here. One is the fetch, and the other is the conversion of the response into JSON. Both of those are asynchronous things. OK, happened fairly quickly. It's a small amount of data. It's a pretty good server that I'm pinging. Every once in a while, this will take a little bit longer to run. But right now, it's running pretty well. There we go. There was a little bit of a delay that time. So I am calling this function get user, and I'm taking the return value from it, which I've just hard coded it as 42, and then I'm writing out that return value. Here it is. That's the first thing that happens. And then the second thing is the console log of the data. This is the data that's being appended here as well. This is the normal flow of things. So I call the function, the function runs, the fetch gets sent off, that's asynchronous, it gets set aside, the rest of the function runs, the return value comes back, and then it writes this out. And then at some point in the future, the response comes back, and then at some point in the future, the response is converted to JSON, and then passed on to the next then method. All right, that's basic use of fetch. If I make this an asynchronous function, by adding the keyword async in front of this, what I'm doing is I'm actually turning this function into a promise. And if you've worked with fetch much at all, you know that fetch really is just a wrapper around a promise as well. So by doing this, I've turned my whole function into a promise. If I save this, come back, and I reload this page, there, promise is what gets written out here. My function returned a promise, it got resolved, and then was 42. So as quickly as it got down to the bottom, it returned 42. And then there it was. So the promise was immediately resolved. I could add a set timeout here uh, and delay this for some point in the future. Then I would get an unresolved promise. So what's a practical use of this? Well, in this code right here, I'm calling the fetch. I can't use this data right away. So let's remove this part. If I was to try to do something like this, let response equal this. Let data equal response.json. That looks like a lot less code. It looks really easy to read. And then I could do something like this. Output dot text content plus equals, and then we'll take the uh, stringified version of that data and format it nicely. Oh, it doesn't fit on the line. I'll just do this. 
There we are. Now if I run this, I get an error. So promise rejected type error response.json is not a function. What do you mean it's not a function? I know that my response object has a JSON method, so why is this failing? Well, it's because this was an asynchronous method. This is something that gets set aside. It's running off on another thread. And by the time the browser has read this line and then jumped to this line, it hasn't had time to finish this. It doesn't have a response yet. So therefore, response is still this promise that hasn't been resolved. So I can't take that data and do something with it. However, because I'm inside of an asynchronous function, what I can do now is I can add await, this keyword await in front of there. And then I can do it again for this one. So I'm saying to the browser, OK, we're inside of a promise. Let's wait for this result to come back. When the result comes back, stick it in here. Then we come down to this line. And we're going to take that thing and convert it into JSON. But we're going to wait for it. We're not going to go to the next line of code until this is finished. Then we'll have the data. Then I will get down to the 42 at the very end. Promise. Pending. Great. Now this is working. Now output area, request sent, and there's my data. Simply because I was inside of an asynchronous function, which basically just turns this into a big promise, and I can pause and wait the result. I can wait for this promise to resolve. I can wait for this promise to resolve. If I skipped this one, I would have the same problem again. Nothing came back. So I got a response. Data came over to this thing. Oh, OK, I don't know what that is. So it can't write anything out. There's nothing there for it to write out. And that's why this fails. We have to wait for the response JSON to work as well. And now, this ret is the promise pending. And there it is. Now it's resolved. And there's the 42. That's the value. All right, so that's the basic gist of async and await. It's really just putting this in front of the function. You're turning it into a promise. And by doing that, you're allowed to pause and wait for results of other promises inside your function. So async and await. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.